Number five, Avery Kankas. Number six, Mariana Hauser. Number seven, Kennedy Schaefer. Number eight, Addison May. Number nine, Eliza Dagley. Number 12, Ava Toll. Number 13, Madison Walton. Number 14, Claire Alecker. Number 15, London Napier. Number 16, Kinsley Johnson. Number 17, Trina Wheatley. Number 21, Charlize ben Bernhardt. Number 22, Lexi Perez. Number 23, Gabriella Degara. Number 25, Bella Massoni. Number 27, Gracie Arnie. Number 30, Elena Ferry. Number 32, Lila Davis. Number 36, Sophia Constantine. Number 50, Gracie Fruit. Number 51, Peyton Ross. Number 99, Serena Dumapet. The 14U is coached by head coach Alex Davis, assistant coaches Gina Constantine and Jeremy Musani. Now introducing the 12U. Number one, Grace Stimkow. Number two, Molly Armstrong. Number three, Ava Armbruster. Number five, Haley Curtis. Number six, Sophia Nicholas. Number seven, Riley Jenkins. Number 12, Abigail Ross. Number 13, Faith Skimka. Number 14, Ada Bernhardt. Number 21, Quinn Kekis. Number 23, Carly Poston. Number 28, Isabella Deputy. Number 47, Clara Blinsky. Number 67, Vivian Whiteman. Number 60, CJ White. Number 11, Zuri Carter. Number 33, Myla Arnie. 12U is coached by Andy Stimkov. Assistant coaches Derek Nicholas and Brooke White. Now for our 10U. Number three, Skyla Staller. Number five, Gabriella Wolfork. Number six, Evelyn Adams. Number seven, Cameron Arthur. Number eight, Taylor, Taylor Bernhardt. Number nine, Hayden Kekis. Number 10, Isabella Gardner. Number 11, Ruth Harrison. Number 13, Adrena Devity. Number 14, Riley Rasmussen. Number 16, Brooklyn Steele. Number 19, Charlotte Rowland. Number 20, Penelope Lau. Number 24, Kasia Zianowicz. Number 25, Satsuki Yanagawa. Number 28, Allison Hayes. Number 29, Avery Spencer. Number 32, Mackenzie Schudecker. Number 36, Annabelle Constantine. 
Number 54, Emmy Tillman. Number 99, Allison Langdon. Number 44, Madeline Morris. And number 44, I'm sorry, number 45, Zoe Carpenter. Ten you is coached by head coach Jason Arthur, assistant coach Rick Gardner. Now for our eight you. Number one, Brooklyn Hunter. Number two, Tegan Rep. Number three, Nora Locha. Number four, Violet Toll. Number five, Ensley Vinsley. Number six, Lillian May. Number seven, Suheli Moreno. Number eight, Anastasia Wolfor. Number nine, Zoe Kohler. Number 10, Maya Jarrett. Number 11, Harper Cobb. Number 13, Sydney Toller. Number 14, Harper Chambers. Number 16, Mika Yamamoto. Number 17, Katie Bushnell. Number 18, Josephine Fry. Number 19, Emberly Robbins. Number 23, Dylan Holterman. Number 25, Kaylin Williams. And number 88, Jocelyn Jones. The AU is coached by Laura May. Panthers and our own Lady Trojans from Summit Grove High School. Again, we'd like to recognize our sponsorship. Our diamond sponsorship, B2S Life Sciences. Our platinum sponsorship, William and Helen Schwab Foundation. Our gold sponsorship, Dana Green Health Markets, Tag Exteriors. 
Dan Rittenhouse, Ever Wise, Wealth Management. Susan Oki, Photography. The Barn at Bay Horse Inn. Center Grove Lacrosse promotes good sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and officials in a positive manner. The use of profanity, gestures, or discriminatory comments are strictly prohibited. Violation of these terms are grounds for removal from the premises. Thank you. At this time, please stand and remove your hats for our national anthem. Now, for our starting lineups. First, for the visiting team, the Panthers from Park Tudor. Number six, Hadley Murphy. Number eight, Ellie Hunter. Number 10, Mary Jane Ferguson. Number 11, Cecilia Andrea. Number 13, Lily Harris. Number 14, Cole Anderson. Number 21, Charlotte Sturman. Number 23, Lizzie Fisher. Number 24, Izzy Wallace. Number 25, Lauren Richard. Number 26, Lizzie Sturman. Number 49, Sila Larman. Park Tudors, coach by head coach Leslie Sherman, assistant coach Kim Allen, Maxwell Johnson, Danielle Magnet. Now, for our own Lady Trojans. Number five, Peyton Fox. Number six, Emily Franklin. Number 13, Kelsey Green. Number 14, Madeline Taylor. Number 17, Julie Pinnell. Number 22, Kendall Arthur. Number 24, Reese Burns. Number 27, Taylor Robinson. Number 35, Rose Eckhart. Number 44, Lala Weir. Number 55, Julianne McIntyre. And a goalie, number 90, Alita Fisher. Some of those is coached by head coach Craig Jarrett, assistant coach Abby Bartel, and assistant coach Julie Zuck.
Good evening and welcome to the Center Grove Lacrosse Complex for tonight's Indiana High School Girls Lacrosse game between the number one Park Tudor Panthers and the number two Center Grove Trojans. Hello, one. I'm Kevin Conrad along with Scott Hendrick. We welcome everyone to our coverage of Center Grove Girls Lacrosse. Scott, great matchup tonight. Beautiful weather, 79 degrees here at game time. And these two teams played last year in the state championship in Class 1A. And tonight, it's a rematch during the regular season. Yeah, this is a game that both teams have had on their calendar ever since last year ended. And both teams are looking forward to it. It's going to be a great matchup. Two really good teams. Both have had great seasons so far. Both are pretty evenly matched. We're really excited to get the, tonight's game going. Couldn't ask for better weather. Yeah, this is perfect. It's a great night. Everybody's out in shorts and t-shirts, which is unusual for uh, spring this year, this spring. So it's going to be a great night where it's going to be a fun fun game, and, and everybody's looking forward to it. All right, we're ready for the draw. In the state poll, Park Tudor number one in 1A and Center Grove number two in 1A. Yeah, and if you look at the statistics, they're really evenly matched. We're going to have a, a lot of firepower. Both teams score a lot, and um, – Looks like uh, Kendall Arthur took the draw for Center Grove. Go, go, go! Park Tudor. Park Tudor, Hadley Murphy picks it up. She's on the move. Murphy's one to watch today. She's their leading scorer for Park Tudor. Leading assists, leading points. She's a really good lacrosse player, one to really watch today. Good defense by the Trojans. Lila. Where? Number 44. In the middle, we have a whistle. It went to Hadley Murphy, number six, but a whistle from the outside official. Yeah, I'm not real sure which, what he called there, but it looked like possibly shooting space, which is going to give her a free shot from the 12-meter line. I believe that's what it's called. <laughs> Murphy's going to take the shot here for the Panthers. And it's a goal. Looks like a goal for, was that Murphy? Yep, yep, yep it was Murphy. Hadley Murphy. She's the leading scorer this year for Park Tudor. She's got 35 goals. Uh, I think she's around 9 or 10 assists. Like I said, leading points, leading assists. She's a really good lacrosse player. Can't let her get that close to the goal and, um, and, and get an open shot. 10.56 to play in this opening quarter. Panthers on the board, 1-0. Ready for our second draw tonight. Kendall Arthur, 22. Yeah, looks like they're the going to redo. Looks like they're going to redo that. Ellie Hunter out there for Park Tudor. Controlled by the Center Grove Trojans. Yeah, good pickup for the Trojans by number by Julian McIntyre. Player down for Park Tudor. She appears to be okay. That's 21. Charlotte Sturman. Sturman, I should say. Trojans maintain possession. Now for Center Grove, we're going to keep our eye on the same number as Park Tudor. Emily Franklin, number six for Center Grove, is our leading scorer. And if you look at statistics, they're really close between the two. So definitely going to be keeping our eye on number six is tonight. See that. Larman, goalie, makes the stop. And Trojans come up with a turnover. Franklin trying to pick up the ground ball. Number six, that's Emily Franklin. She has possession in behind the net. Franklin last year was all state for the Trojans, and she scores. We're tied 1-1. Nice job by Emily there. Started out behind the goal, kind of got around the corner, did a little backhand low, got it right past the goalie's feet. Great shot for Emily. 9.56 on the clock, opening quarter. We're tied at one apiece. So a great response by Cinegrove after giving up that first goal to Murphy. Yeah, so far it's what we expected. A couple really good shots by both teams. That score, both scored on their first possession. 
And it looks like we're going to have Arthur for Center Grove and Hunter for Park Tudor to do the draw again. Last year, Park Tudor beat Center Grove 16 to 8 in the 1A state championship game. Park Tudor on the season 7 and 2. Like I mentioned, ranked number one in 1A, and they're ranked number eight overall in the state of Indiana. Center Grove at number two in 1A. Seven and three on the season is the record for the Trojans. And the draw this time is going to be won by the Panthers, 24 with possession. Izzy Wallace. Throws it ahead to Cecilia Andrea. Ellie Hunter. Now to Mary Jane Furquan. Good movement here by the Panthers. 26 in behind the net. Lizzie Sturman. Now they try to get up to the high right side. The ball's loose, picked up by 11, Cecilia Andrea. Good defense by the Trojans. Trying to force that turnover. Yeah, it's really good defense by Kelsey. Kelsey Green um, almost forced a turnover. Park Tudor got it back, but that kind of pressure is going to be good for us all night. Tonight is Center Grove Girls Lacrosse Youth Night, so a lot of youngsters in the crowd cheering on the varsity team tonight. Got a really good crowd tonight for Center Grove. Yeah, you got you got to love Youth Night. We've got a lot of young girls playing this year. It really looks good for the program in the future. And uh, on a on a big game like this, it's always great to have the stands full cheering our team on. All right, here we go. Here's Hadley Murphy. She's going to have another shot on goal. Oh, good defense. Well, but they called a penalty. Back official with the yellow flag, the penalty. Yeah, it looks like they called a cross check. So she's going to get another opportunity. 7.59 to play. Opening quarter here at the CG Lacrosse Complex. We're tied at one apiece between Center Grove and Park Tudor. This is six, Hadley. All right, looks like we had a crease violation. Park Tudor stepped inside the circle, the goalie circle, so that's going to be a turnover, and Center is going to get the ball back. Ground ball picked up by five. That's Peyton Falks. Peyton. Middle of the field, throws it ahead. 55, it's Julianne McIntyre. 13 for the Panthers now has control. Lily Harris. And she's not to the turf. Yeah, a lot of contact there. They're going to give her a yellow card. I think that's going to be a two-minute penalty on Arthur. Trainer coming out to check out the Park Tudor player. Again, that's Lily Harris down on the turf needing some attention. 7.05 to play. We're in the opening quarter here at the CG Lacrosse Complex. Again, we're tied at one apiece. Temperatures high 70s. We did break 80. When I got here, it was over 80 degrees. Beautiful day. Yeah, hopefully that means the cold weather's gone. I'm, 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 I'm ready for, ready for summer to hit. Um, I know all the spring sports have had a lot of rain, a lot of weather to deal with this spring. So, some sunny days. I think baseball's playing tonight down at Bedford North Lawrence, so they're getting some good weather as well. And uh, everybody's looking forward to it. Tennis is going on, and you probably have updates on all those here soon. Tennis playing at Franklin tonight. Hear the applause. For 13, Lily Harris, she's going to make her way to the sideline. Walking off with Coach Leslie Sherman at Park Tudor. Yeah, so when we resume play here, we'll be in the penalty. Uh, we'll have a, a one girl in the penalty box for two minutes, so we'll have to to uh, really play good defense, try to keep them from scoring during that penalty time. Five, 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 five. 
So Arthur, again, will be on the sideline until 5.05, two minutes. You're on the sideline. We have 7.05 to play in this opening quarter. Big thank you to the Center Grove Girls Lacrosse Program for being our sponsor tonight, bringing us out here tonight for the live web stream. Appreciate everybody online watching tonight. There we go. That's what we that's what we need. A man down. If we can get the ball on our end, that's great. Going all the way and scoring. Nice job. Jolie Pinnell on the goal there. Well, that's something you don't see a lot of times when you're down a man is you get that turnover, take it down the field, and really make him pay for it. And Jolie's done a great job this year. That's her 11th goal of the season, so she's definitely a threat on offense. Jolie Pinnell scoring, making it 2-1 Trojans. First lead of the night for CG. All right, looks like we've got a change for Center Grove at, face, at the draw. It's going to be Lila Weir this time. Ellie Hunter for Park Tudor. Uh, Lila does a good job, gets the ball out to Emily Franklin. And once again, we're down a person, but we've got the ball on offense. It's great. Emily Franklin making some tremendous moves. Yeah, ideally you like to pass the ball around here, kill some time, give your girl a chance to get back on the, on the field. But if you've got an open shot as good as Emily is, she's going to take it there. Good stop by Larman, the goalie. Shot taken by Franklin. Yeah, pressure by Emily Franklin after the shot on the goalie forces a bad pass, and she's tough to get that uh, get that pass over. She's a she's a tall girl, and she's got that stick up in the air. Makes it really tough on the goalie to get the outlet pass. Trojans getting organized. Franklin out on top. Good defense here by Park Tudor. Turnover. That was Chloe Anderson that came up with the ground ball for Park Tudor. Now it's out of bounds. It'll be Trojan possession. Yeah, Dina Spear did a good job pressuring the uh, the Park Tudor girl as she was trying to get the ball across midfield and force a bad pass. Loose here on the Center Grove sideline, right in front of the bench. Ball out of bounds. Panthers will have control. Lily Harris, 13, advancing the ball. Some resistance there by the Trojans. Good job by the Trojan goalie. Stepping up, Alita Fisher. And we do, have, Kendall Arthur is back in the game, so her penalty time's up. She's back, we're back to even numbers. Called a hold on Park Tudor, so Center Grove will get the ball. Lauren Richard, number 25, took a real tumble. But they did call holding against the Trojans. McIntyre gets a good outlet pass up to Reese Burns. Weir, and now to the middle. 17 loss of momentarily. Pinnell gets it back, goes back to Weir. Just under four minutes to play. We're tied, actually not tied. It's Center Grove's first lead at 2-1. to one. Here's some instructions being yelled out from the center group sideline. Yeah, I like this. They're being patient. 
looking for the matchup that they want, and it looks like they've got it. Emily's going to try to make a move. Good defense by Park Tudor. Really good defense. Couple of defenders on her. Now a timeout called by the Trojans head coach, Craig Jarrett. Stops the clock with 319 on the clock in the opening quarter. Two to one, center groom in front. Good start for the Trojans. Yeah, we've had the ball on our side of the field a lot, which is a, obviously a huge advantage. Even when we were down a down a player, um, anytime you can keep them, you know, keep number six, Hadley Murphy from from their side of the field, you're going to definitely have an advantage. Last night, Center Grove softball got a 10-0 home win over Bloomington South for senior night in five innings. Center Grove off tonight. Softball back in action Thursday hosting Avon. We'll be there for the live stream at 6 o'clock. But tomorrow night, we'll have CG Baseball hosting Cathedral. I don't care what it is, basketball, football, it's always a great matchup when you're playing the Irish. Oh, yeah, always always a great game. Both teams are looking forward to it. Hopefully the weather holds out. I know it's not, not looking great, but hopefully we get lucky and the rain gets out of here before game time. That new turf field that they've got drains quick, so – if the weather's decent, they'll play, and I'm sure it'll be a great game. And then coming up this Friday, we will have the IU-Purdue volleyball scrimmage coming up. That'll be played at the Center Grove High School main gym, the Vandy Gym, expecting between four to 5,000 fans, and we'll be there for the live stream. It gets underway at 6.30. Yeah, what a cool event. I know our, our uh, Center Grove girls volleyball coach was real involved in getting that game set up. Just a great environment, great for the fans to see some real high-quality Look, uh, volleyball being played and a crowd like that, they're, they're going to be in for something special. And then coming up on Saturday we'll have a double header of Center Grove softball at 10 and 2. They'll play b at 10 and Columbus North at 2. It'll be the Russ Milligan Classic coming up this Saturday and it's also alumni day for Center Grove softball on Saturday. And I think you're going to join me on Saturday for some softball. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So I love watching Center Grove softball. They've had a strong program for a lot of years. So this, this alumni day ought to be pretty special. They've got a lot of great players that have come through the program. Hopefully a lot of them show up on Saturday and we can celebrate them. All right, we're ready for action. Last time out called by Center Grove, 319 on the clock. We're in the opening quarter here at the CG Lacrosse Complex. Center Grove in front of Park Tudor, 2-1. to one. Park Tudor, your number one team in 1A. Center Grove at number two in 1A. Look like Lila Weir is going to take the shot. Nice stop by the goalie there. Larman, she's done well on the goal. Another shot by the Trojans, missed by Pinnell. Pinnell already with one goal tonight, the other goal by Franklin. Yeah, goalie's doing a great job there, but but Center Grove's doing an awesome job getting the rebound, picking up the loose ball, and keep, keep the ball on our end of the field and keep getting open shots. Quick adjustment on the goal. That's for the reason for the stop of play there on the field. Now we're ready for action. Reese Burns, 24, finds 55. Julianne McIntyre, she'll pull it out, back out on top. Franklin. Now to 22, Kendall Arthur. Center Grove, you're right, being very, very patient here in offense. They keep cutting to the middle. Saw number eight, Dina Spear flashing. Now they're going to go to 55 in the middle. Misses on the shot, but there's a flag. Yeah, great look by Kendall Arthur. Found, found McIntyre cutting through the middle. Hit her on a great pass, got a great shot, and there's going to be a yellow card, so... Looks like there was contact high with the uh, with the with the stick by number 21 Charlotte Sturman for the uh, for Park Tudor. So two minutes in the penalty box. We have 2:13 left to play in the opening quarter. Like McIntyre's going to start with the ball here, so it's a uh, it's going to be one on one her and the goalie and see see what she can do. Larman in goal for Park Tudor. McIntyre's a good shooter. She scored 16 goals for, for us this year, so she can definitely get it done. Goes low, and Larman was able to knock it away. 
Trojans come up with it though, 44. Weir. Out on top, ground ball. Two minutes. Still, all right, now Park Tudor gets control. Hadley. We're under two minutes to play, first quarter. Hadley Murphy. In behind the goal. Richer. Now back to Murphy. Now the Panthers taking their time. 90 seconds left in this opening quarter. They're down two to one. Just passing in behind the goal here. Good defense by Franklin. There's a ground ball. She keeps it from going out of bounds. A player down for the Trojans. Yeah, really good job by uh, Franklin, and I can't tell who else is back there. Uh, it looks like Peyton Falks. Good job on defense. Pressured her, made her lose the ball, went out of bounds, and they maintain possession, but good pressure on defense. 48 seconds to play in this opening quarter. Keep an eye on the clock. We're down to 30 seconds. Release! Release! Go, go, go! Richer. Come on, Lauren, go! Go! Trojans really putting up a great defensive stand. Yeah, the clock's getting low. We're down to 15 seconds. Go! Go! Now they say it's time to go. Eight seconds, seven. Murphy. Looking to take a shot. Ah! Missed. And that brings us to the end of the opening quarter. Yeah, really good job to finish out the quarter by Center Grove's defense. Very solid. We played one quarter. Center Grove leads it. Two to one over Park Tudor. Tonight's match being presented by the Center Grove Girls Lacrosse Program. This is CG Girls Lacrosse. remembers your car's quirks better than your favorite barista remembers your coffee order. Delivering a wash experience as smooth and effortless as your morning latte. Inside the Center Grove Lacrosse Complex. Lights just turned on. We're ready for the second quarter. Center Grove, your number two team in 1A, leading the number one team in 1A, Park Tudor, 2-1. Two to one. Emily Franklin along with Fidel scoring the goals in the opening quarter for the Trojans and Murphy getting the goal for the Panthers. Kevin Conrad along with Scott Hendrick with you tonight. Beautiful night for lacrosse, tennis, baseball, you name it. Beautiful night, beautiful week. We're going to have weather-wise. Just hopefully, the you're right, the, the rain can hopefully stay away, and we might get a little bit of rain possibly tonight, and there's a chance for some rain maybe tomorrow. But all in all, the temperatures this week are going to be fantastic. Yeah, really good, and, and that was a great first quarter. Uh, not exactly what I was expecting. Uh, both teams are, typically score a lot more than this in the first quarter, but we knew it was going to be a great game, and it was so far. Um, both teams playing great defense, trying to get each other figured out. 
hopefully we can continue to uh, keep the ball on our end of the, of the field a lot. We did a great job maintaining possession there, and if we keep the ball on our end of the field, our end of the field we're going to have a lot of luck tonight. Ready for the opening draw of the second quarter, 12 minutes on the clock. Yeah, we got Ellie Hunter for Park Tudor and Kendall Arthur for Center Grove at the draw. And we're underway. Quarter number two, Emily Franklin possesses it. Good defense here by the Panthers, and Franklin's going to get things set up here for the Trojans. A lot of patience being displayed by both teams tonight. Yeah, I think that's just a... Oh, great, great pass by Jolie Pinnell to Kendall Arthur there. We're crossing, crossing the middle. Kendall Arthur with her first goal of the game. Makes the score three to one, Center Grove. Assist by number 17, Jolie Pinnell. Yeah, that was a great, uh, great look. They took the ball out the top of the at the top of the field and just kind of passed it around, waited for something to happen. Arthur saw an opening, crossed through the middle, and Pinnell hit her with a great pass, and she had a great shot, got it past the goalie. Trojans lead it three to one, eleven twenty-seven on the clock, quarter number two. Panthers got off to a one-zero lead, but since then three. Unanswered goals by the Senegal Trojans to take a three to one lead. Franklin. And yeah, Ken Kendall Arthur and Emily Franklin seem to have a good uh, good thing working here on the draw. They've they've got the last three possessions. Rose Eckhart throws it into the middle. 17 for the Trojans. Julie Pinnell. Now to 55. McIntyre. Yeah. Turnover. Picked up by 24. Yeah, got the ball in there in the middle. Had a couple of girls on her and uh, wasn't able to hang on to it. Izzy Wallace comes up with the turnover. She'll now have possession. Sprints down the sideline. Good defense by Eckhart and Franklin. Force the ball out of bounds, but it will stay possession of Park Tudor. Number eight, Ellie Hunter. Couple of defenders on her. Splits the defenders, has it knocked away from behind. Going right back to the Panthers. Ten minutes to go in this second quarter. Close it up. Let go right. Hunter works her way to the left. Finds number six, Hadley Murphy. Murphy with a lone goal tonight for the Panthers. Lila Weir giving her good pressure. Lizzie Sturman. Rotates it to 10, left side. Mary Jane Furquan. Turnover. Center Grove comes up with it. Taylor Robinson, 27. Yeah, Taylor, nice job on defense there. Got the turnover. Penalty on Park Tudor, knocked the ball free, but we got the ball back and yeah, looks like an unforced turnover there, but uh, Park Tudor's gonna get the ball. That's a nice job on defense by Robinson. Fisher trying to clear at the goalie. Goes out of bounds, here comes Richard. Whistle. Yellow card going against the Trojans. 14 will exit. That's Madeline Taylor. 
Looks like contact with the head. Another yellow card is going to be a two-minute penalty. Eight forty-nine to play in the second quarter. Three-one Trojans. Is that twenty-five, Lauren Richer? Lauren Richer. In behind the goal. Picked up by 26, Lizzie Sturman. Here comes Murphy. Spin move, nice. shot, and scores. That was a tremendous spin move by Hadley Murphy. She gets her second goal tonight. Yeah, it sure was. You can see why she's their leading scorer. She made a nice move there and ended up one-on-one -on -one with the goalie from about eight feet away, and that's a tough one to stop. Panthers within one. That's Murphy's second goal, and you know it was done when done with one of our girls in the penalty box. It's tough to play defense when you're down a man, so we're gonna have to try to get the ball on our end again. Hopefully, Arthur and Franklin can get this draw and and get the ball on offense. Both teams pursuing. Ball still loose. We got a whistle. It will be Panther possession. Richer lost it momentarily, gets it back. We're at the eight minute mark, second quarter. 3 2 Trojans by one over the Park Tudor Panthers. Natalie Hansen, number five. Richer, high left side. Good defense by the Trojans. Good defense there by Green and Lila Weir. Shot by 24 over the top of the goal. That's Izzy Wallace. She made a nice move, got close to the goal, but our defense collapsed on her and forced her to shoot over the back. So good, good job again on defense. Here comes Murphy again, missing. Mm. Looks like Murphy got a piece of number five, Falks, with her stick and the gut. And Falks needs some extra time. I don't know why, but I happened to just look in that area, but uh, Murphy took the stick and Got a piece of folks in the gut. Yeah, I was the following the ball. Area. I didn't see it, but uh, yeah, that's going to hurt. So, folks coming to see the trainer. I think she's going to have to come off. Kind of a shot there to the abdomen area. It looks like Olivia Daniels is going to go in for folks there. Looks like she might have just got the wind knocked out of her. Panthers with the uh, ball with 7.09 to play. We're in the second quarter. Center Grove three, Park Tudor two. Loose, both teams pursuing. 13 gets knocked to the turf. Yeah, That's both, Lily both, Harris. Both girls going for it. a lot of contact. They're going to give Park Tudor the possession. But our penalty time's up now, so we're at even strength. We've got uh, all of our girls back on the field. 14 Taylor back in for the Trojans. Six and a half minutes to play in this opening half. We see a couple of flags and on the play. Shot by Richer there, a little bit outside, but there was a flag. Defense is definitely working hard. They're not giving Park Tudor any easy shots. Richer. She's going to take the shot and scores. We're tied at 3 3. Yeah, good shot by, by Richer there. 
that's tough when you uh, when you get that penalty shot. And some some of the girls will try to drive in and get a close shot, but uh, but some of the girls are strong from outside and are able to get that shot. And it's it's tough. There's nobody on you. It's just one on one. Tough for the goalie to, to stop that. You're right, Lauren Richer, with the goal. Really didn't attack the goal. Just uh, took a shot. And went low. Ties the game at 3-3. 6.04 to play. We're in the second quarter. Ooh, Arthur did a nice job. Popped it up. And it looked like it was going to go to Franklin. But uh, Richard stuck her, stuck her pole in there and, and, and broke it up. So. Trying to split the defenders, gets knocked to the turf. 24 for the Panthers. That's Izzy Wallace knocked to the turf. They'll maintain possession. Wallace ready to go. On the move. Throws it ahead to 26. That's Lizzie Sturman. Good job by Larman. Should say, excuse me, that's going to be Fisher, the center grove goalie with a nice stop. Yeah, so far, Fisher's done a great job at goals. She's made a couple nice saves, made some good passes, getting the ball out of there. Rose Eckhart to 44. Lila Ware. Partu's really dominated the possession here in this second quarter on offense. Hadn't seen Center Grove to our left very much here on offense this quarter. Yeah, apparently the uh, right side of the field is the place to be because Center Grove had the ball most of the first That's quarter, right. and now Park Tudor's had most of the second. See if we can change that here, maintain possession for a little while, and get a good shot. 440 to play. We're in the second quarter. <laughs> Trojans keep flashing to the middle. There's Arthur, takes the shot. We got a whistle. Yeah, that was another good one. McIntyre hit Arthur again, crossing the middle. That time the goalie was able to stop it, but there was a penalty. So Arthur will get a shot from the penalty line. I believe she is also one of those players that's going to try to shoot from, from there without getting any closer. So. Lorman at goal. She's going to take a shot, and she puts it in there. Yeah, real good job. Kendall Arthur, she was ready. As soon as they blew the whistle, she had the uh, the ball back behind her, ready to shoot, and, and did a great job. Get it up top right-hand corner, pass the goalie. Good job. Trojans regain the lead, 4-3. to 3.53 to play in the second quarter. Arthur, a couple of goals. Both coming here in the second quarter. <clears throat> The other goals and for the Trojans, Emily Franklin got the first one in the first quarter and Julie Pinnell got the other one in the first quarter. Murphy's got a couple of goals for Park Tudor and Richer with a goal for Park Tudor. As expected, we expect a very competitive uh, game so far tonight. Again, they played last year in the state championship. Park Tudor beat Center Grove 16-8. And I was told before tonight's game, this would be a much more competitive game than what we had last year in the state championship. All right, Arthur once again controls the draw to Emily Franklin. Those two really work well together. Franklin high left side, 55, that's McIntyre. Works her way to the right, trying to find a clearing in around the Back of the net, takes the shot off Larman, the goalie. Yeah, did a good job. Did, wasn't open on the right side, but went all the way around the back side of the crease, came around the left corner and was open, took a really good shot. That was a nice nice save by the Park Tudor goalie. Murphy down that far side of the field, now to the middle. Had it knocked away, but we've got a whistle going against Center Grove. All right, we're, 
We're going to have, is that, Mur yeah, Murphy's got the ball outside. Hadley Murphy. She's dangerous. A couple of goals tonight. Very offensive-minded, as you said, leading scorer for this Panther team. 2.39 on the clock. Second quarter. Finds number eight, Ellie Hunter. Works her way to the middle. Oh, nice save again by the goalie. Fisher was Anita Fisher to, did a great job there. Was able to knock it away. Picked up by Hadley Murphy. 26, Lizzie Sturman. Lauren Richer has to track it down. Approaching two minutes in the second quarter. Richard going left, spin move. They were ready for that spin move. Yeah, did a nice job. Who was that? That was Madeline Taylor. Well. And then Richard goes in behind the goal and then comes around the other side and puts one in. Yeah, I, I was kind of watching the uh, the defense there. She snuck around the backside of the goal, got open and took a, a shot, a bounce shot, um, bounced about four feet in front of the goalie and got in that top corner. That's a tough one. 150 on the clock. We're tied at four apiece between Center Grove and Park Tudor. Marcy Woodhouse, number 12, enters the ball game for CG. 14, Madeline Taylor will take a break. Yeah, it looks like Park Tudor's going to make a little adjustment there. Had a lot of success with Arthur getting the ball out to Franklin, so they're going to put two defenders on Franklin. So obviously I think Arthur's going to try to flip the ball back on this one if she can. Yeah. 24 gets control of it. Yeah, nice adjustment by Park Tudor there. The ball did go on that end, and uh, they were able to get it. Izzy Wallace for the Panthers. Here comes Wallace. Good speed. Works her way to the middle, weaving through the defenders. Finally, some resistance, about two to three defenders on her. She did take a shot. She's left of the goal. Player down for the Panthers. We do have a whistle going yeah, looks, against the Trojans. Looks like they called a hold there, so no penalty time, but they will get possession back. Hadley Murphy was knocked to the ground. She's back to her feet. Looks like Murphy's going to take the shot here for the Panthers with 113 on the clock. We're in the second period. Kind of lost it as she uh, took like her stick back. She lost a bit. Was she hit from yeah, behind? Yeah, I, th I think they called ca called something there. It looked like she just. I thought she just lost it. Uh, I she did too. Was getting ready for the shot, but they must have. Looks like they called uh, Lila Weir, possibly making contact. She tries the same thing again, and great stop by Anita Fisher on defense there at the goalie position. She's got good size. Was able to take away the high shot from Murphy. Lila Weir gets the ball, and she's going all the way down the field, showing good speed, gets the ball on offense. Out to Emily Franklin, and... 45 seconds to play until halftime. So yeah, Grove trying to work that final shot to get that... Uh, Maybe get this uh, game 5-4 at halftime. Yeah, tied up right now is good, but, man, that'd be really good momentum to go into halftime with a goal. Franklin takes a look at the time. It's 25 seconds. Looks at the clock again, high left side, Get getting really wide. Get ready for an ISO. Trojans Get getting ready all for an ISO. organized, and, and now Franklin trying to go to work here. Fakes right, goes left, spin move. Comes back to the right. She's double teamed. Looks to the middle. We have a whistle. Yeah, really good job on Park Tudor on defense there. Franklin was trying to get the ball to the middle. 
kept having two or three girls collapse on her. She did uh, did try to make a pass to Lila Weir uh, in the middle, but wasn't able to connect. So we go into halftime tied four to four. Great matchup tonight between Center Grove and Park Tudor. Tied at four apiece. Park Tudor number one in 1A, Center Grove number two in 1A. And Center Grove Youth Knights. So a lot of the youngsters will play here at halftime. We'll take a break. This is CG Girls Across. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? With today's home values, this is the perfect time to sell and make those dreams real. When you work with a world-class agent at Coldwell Banker, you benefit from trusted guidance in our revolutionary seller's assurance program to make your home sale more rewarding than ever. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. Some people spend all day washing and buffing their ride to shiny perfection by hand. But you, you've learned the fine art of delegation.
score at halftime. Tied at four apiece between Center Grove and Park Tudor here at the Center Grove Lacrosse Complex. Rematch of last year's 1A state championship game. Park Tudor beat Center Grove last year in the state title game, 16 to eight. So far tonight, a much more competitive game. Trojans led two to one after the first quarter. Got up 3-1 early second quarter. Park Tudor had a really big second quarter, scoring three goals. So they grab a couple of goals. Tonight is Senegro Girls Youth Nights. One of the youngsters out here playing here at intermission. You can see him out there getting after it. What an opportunity for these youngsters to play here on the varsity field at halftime. Here's a scoring summary from the first half in that opening quarter. Hadley Murphy scored the first goal for Park Tudor. Trojans got it tied with Emily Franklin. Just a little bit under 10 minutes left in that opening quarter, made it 1-1. Jolie Pinnell scored with 6.47 to play in the first quarter to make it 2-1. That was the score at the end of the first quarter. In quarter number two, the Trojans scored again early. Kendall Arthur, first goal of the night, made it 3-1. Hadley Murphy responds with a goal for the Panthers, made it 3-2. Park Tudor within one, and then they tied it. Lauren Richer scored with about six minutes to play in the second quarter, got it tied 3-3. So they go regain the lead at 4-3 with Kendall Arthur scoring, and then uh, Lauren Richer gets her second goal in the contest with about a minute 50 left to play in the uh, second quarter to tie the game at four apiece. And that puts it, our score here at 4-4 at intermission. So once again, you look at the state rankings in Class 1A. Park Tudor, seven wins, two losses. They're ranked number one. Center Grove at seven and three, ranked number two, right behind Park Tudor. Coming up at the end of tonight's game between Center Grove and Park Tudor, we will have our Center Grove Player of the Game presented by Texas Roadhouse here in Greenwood. Somebody's going to go home with a coupon or certificate for a free dinner for two at Texas Roadhouse. And Scott, uh, let's look at our stats. I, I, I'm not for sure what direction we're going to go, but uh, Kendall Arthur got a couple of goals in that uh, first half. She's looking solid, but a lot of times what we end up doing, we we always look offense, but you got to also think about how about the, the defense? Uh, you got Fisher in the goal, and yeah, so uh, yeah, you, absolutely. You got to look at the, the defense at times. Yeah, the defense looks great. Fisher's doing a good job at defense. Um, I've seen Green has been Kelsey Green, number thirteen, has been real involved, and and uh, and Taylor Robinson, number twenty seven, has done a good job. Lila Weir's been uh, been real athletic, playing defense all the way down the field, doing a good job pressuring them. So. Yeah, it's, it's, again, it's not what I was expecting. I was expecting a lot of offense, but uh, you get the two best teams in the state playing each other, and you never know what to expect. So the youngsters, how great is it to get out here and get a chance to run up and down for a little bit, show what you can do here at halftime of a, a varsity contest, uh, and to do it on a night when you're playing the number one team in the state. Yeah, it's really neat for these girls. I saw a lot of parents over there with their with their phones out filming, and everybody's real excited. Doesn't seem like a big deal once the girls get in high school, but when when you're this age, to get to go out on the high school field, play on the turf, it's really special. So it's a great opportunity. It's a great thing that the uh, Center Grove Youth Girls Lacrosse is doing by by doing this tonight, and uh, and it's it's really cool. Scott, just your thoughts as uh, we get close to second half action, uh, just things that Center Grove needs to do to, 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 to get this win here tonight, to knock off Park Tudor. Yeah, I think the one thing that they did the first quarter uh, really really well is keep the ball on an offensive end, be patient, look for a good shot, take it when it's there, but don't force it. They uh, they did that the first quarter a little bit better. Park Tudor had the ball we talked about uh, a little bit more the second quarter, but if we can keep the ball on our end, um, we're going to be tough to beat. Um, I know that uh, Kendall Arthur and Emily Franklin have done a great job on the draw, 
Uh, so that's where it starts. If you can win the draw, get the ball on offense, and make something happen. Again, an observation. It seemed like the teams going to our right dominated the offensive time of possession. First quarter, Center Grove went to the right, which is your south uh, uh, goal, if you will. And in the second quarter, it was Park Tudor that went to the south, and they seemed to really dominate the time of possession. So we'll see what happens here in quarters three and four. But bottom line, uh, it's been a competitive game, and that's what many were telling me up here in the press box. Again, last year, Center Grove lost 16-8 to to Park Tudor in the state championship, but many said this was going to be a lot more competitive tonight, and I think that's exactly what we've seen so far. Yeah, it is. It's 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 what we were hoping for, and we've you know everybody that's come out to watch tonight's been uh, been lucky to to see a great first half, and I don't expect anything different the second half. I expect it to be a real good game, well played by both teams, and uh, and a close one. Seventy seven degrees as we get ready to start this third quarter. When I got here, it was about 80, 81 degrees, so we did eclipse. 80 degrees for a second day in a row. Last night we had Center Grove softball, and at game time we were at 81 degrees last night at 7 o'clock for the game last night against Bloomington South. Yeah, softball got a great win. Hopefully lacrosse can do the same thing tonight. No surprise here. Kendall Arthur is going to start out taking the draw for Center Grove. And Ellie Hunter for Park Tudor. So, again, a, a big thank you to George Hill and the great staff at Texas Roadhouse for doing our player of the game tonight. A yeah. dinner or two going to somebody. Yeah, I tell you what, you talked about it the last game I did with you with the boys game and uh, got me thinking about it. We ended up going there for dinner that night. So, so you can't beat Texas Roadhouse. George Hill's a great sponsor. He loves the community, loves Center Grove Athletics, and, and we're lucky to have him. Hannah Havistro was our player of the game last night for softball. Home run, triple. What a great night she had on senior night. All right, we're ready for the third quarter. Ready for the draw. Ball's bouncing around. Park Tudor with the same same plan this time. They put two, two girls on Franklin, but she fights for it and comes up with the ball. Somehow Emily Franklin gets possession. We'll slow it up. High left side, good start for the Trojans. Yep, and we've got the ball going to the south goal, so we'll see if it remains lucky for us. It's been good for both teams here to the south. Franklin now works it to the top and rotates it here to the right side to Weir. And behind the goal, 24, Reese Burns. Trojans again, goals from Franklin tonight. Pinnell, Arthur's got two for the Trojans. Yeah, I tell you, they're putting a lot of pressure on Franklin when she gets the ball and gets in the middle. So look for her to to draw a couple defenders, and she's a great passer as well. She's also, I believe, one of the leading assist uh, assists for the Center Grove girls team. So look for her to find an open player. If they're going to put two or three girls on you, that leaves somebody open, and she's a good job. Does a good job of finding them. Kendall Arthur once again kind of flashing to the middle. Looked like she was open for a second or two, but they just didn't see her, didn't recognize her. Yeah, Kendall's really good at that crossing the middle. It's a it's a tough it's tough to catch the ball, turn and shoot with these girls lacrosse sticks. A lot different than the boys. A lot harder to control. So she's really good at it. She's got great control of the ball, and she's one of them that can cr- catch it in the middle, turn and shoot. McIntyre on the move. Well, look, it looked like McIntyre had a nice open lane. I was kind of hoping they let that play go. I know. But they did call a penalty. Yeah, so. let them see it through. Infraction against the Panthers. McIntyre ready to go. 940 and counting, third quarter. Trying to break the tie. Here goes McIntyre and... Took off a little bit before the whistle blow. Yeah, she tried to uh, tried to uh, guess the whistle, I think, and just jumped it just a little bit too early. Lily Harris, really good speed for Park Tudor. 
Good job by Arthur with the defense, along with McIntyre. Yeah, she got out in front of her, made her turn, changed, posi- changed her uh, direction, which gave the rest of the center row girls a chance to get down the field and set up a defense. Ground ball picked up by the Panthers. Shot doesn't go. Yeah, Fisher got Anita Fisher got her stick on that one, deflected it just enough. That was Izzy Wallace, I believe, 24 with the shot attempt for the Panthers. McIntyre's taking the ball down. She's got a lot of pressure. Runs through two or three girls and uh, and gets it. Pinnell. Yeah, Pinnell tried to get close to the goal there. A little bit of pressure on defense, knocked the ball free. Larman. Really solid tonight at goal. 24. Wallace works it to the middle. Now left of the goal. Hadley Murphy, a couple of goals in the first half. She's got some creativity when she attacks the goal, Murphy does. Yeah, she's done, made a couple of real nice spin moves to get open. Um, definitely going to play defense on her and need somebody kind of helping coming from the backside when she spins to help pick her up. Number eight. Looked like that was a Ellie Hunter. Knocked to the turf. Whistle on the play. Yeah, Ellie Hunter's going to get a... Uh, Get the ball right on top of the top of the goal and see what she does with it. Fisher ready to go at goal. Takes the shot over the top of the goal. Picked up though by Murphy. Looking for Richer and the Trojans get the turnover. Yeah, that was really good defense by I think it was Madeline Taylor, their number 14 for Center Grove. Got in the way and forced it, forced that shot to go high. Um, not easy to do when you're when she's got a, a clear path to the goal, but she got in there just enough to disturb the shot. Ball out of bounds. They're going to say at last touch, Park Tudor went off Lily Harris. 645 to play. We're in the third. No scoring as of yet here in the third quarter. We're still tied at four apiece. Not quite the highest scoring affair, at least at this point, than what we saw last year in the state championship game. It was 16-8, to eight, but we still have plenty of time to play here tonight. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see both teams score a few more, but, uh, but right now they're just kind of feeling each other out. Both teams playing great defense, pressuring all the way down the field, causing turnovers. I'd say the defense by both teams has been really good tonight. Defense and goalie play. The goalies have done a great job. Wallace to Richard. Richard goes right, takes a shot, and scores. Her third goal of the night. Lauren Richard makes it 5-4. Park Tudor back in front. 5.59 on the clock. We're in the third quarter. I got Richard with three. Okay. I had uh, Murphy with one. No, Murphy with two, and Richie with th- Richer with three. Okay. Ready for the draw. Ellie Hunter at midfield for the Panthers. Can't see a number yet for Center Grove at the draw. Looks like it might be Julianne McIntyre. I say, looks like a five on one side of the jersey, so it might be McIntyre. Kendall's been taking most of the draws tonight, so mixing it up a little bit. It is 55, you're right. Julianne McIntyre. 14. Chloe Anderson for Park Tudor drops it back to 13. Lily Harris, 5.40 on the clock. We're in the third. 
Panthers by one. Couple of flags on the play. Yeah, Izzy Wallace there drove to the middle, drew the flag. She's gonna have a she's gonna have a penalty shot here. Yellow card on. Looks like Falks. Falks got the yellow card there. She's gonna she's gonna be a penalty box for two minutes. 5.32 on the clock, so yes, two minutes. We'll see around the 3.30 mark. And Izzy Wallace, she's a, she's another one that can score. She's going to be a tough one for the defense. She scored 24 goals this season, so she can definitely get it done. Alita Fisher in goal for the Trojans, ready to go. There's the whistle, works her way right, and throws it in and scores. 6-4, largest lead of the Knights for the uh, Park Tudor Panthers. Izzy Wallace gets her first goal. Well, unlike the boys' game, which I'm a little more familiar with, uh, when you score, the penalty doesn't release, so they still have a minute 57 seconds with a girl in the penalty box, so defense is really going to have to buckle down here. Emily Franklin steps in the middle to the draw. I think that's the first time we've seen Emily tonight. Yeah, Ellie Hunter, I think, is taking just, just about all of them for Park Tudor. She's I done believe. a really, really good job settling down the second half. She has. First time we've seen Franklin do the draw here for the Trojans in this contest. And player down. Good job by Weir. Hunter gets knocked to the turf. And I believe they stopped play for the injured player. They're going to sub out. Ellie Hunter, make sure she's okay. She didn't want to come off. Trojans have the ball. Franklin. Weir over to Franklin. Franklin gives it back to Weir. Arthur. About time to get Kendall Arthur back involved. She scored two quick ones for us, and... She's definitely a threat, so let's see if we can get her to get another shot here. Tries to take a shot. Really good defense by the Panthers. Really clogging up the middle. Yeah, Larman did a great job there at goalie for Park Tudor. That was a good shot by Kendall. Snow Grove had a two-goal lead early on, second quarter, 3-1. Park Tudor with its first two goal lead tonight at 6 4. Lily Harris, 13. Lost it. There's a whistle going against the Trojans. Yeah, it looked like uh, Lily Harris was bound and determined to get to the goal on that one. She was very aggressive, went straight in and drew the penalty. Harris misses on the shot attempt. Good job by Fisher at goalie there. Forced her to shoot high, went over the back of the goal. Fisher clears it out for the Trojans. We have 3.30 to play in this third quarter. Taylor Robinson, that's a nice pass to Lila Weir. Penalty time's up, so we're at even girls, even girls back on the field again. So Olivia, time, time to attack for Center Grove. Olivia Daniels in, 25 for the Trojans. Weir out on top, McIntyre into the middle. Franklin just right of the goal. I believe the officials have called something. I'm not sure. Okay, get ready. Get 
Not sure what that was, but we had a stop in play. Center Grove will take, will hold on to possession. Emily Franklin's going to go back and start behind the goal. Three minutes to go. Third quarter, Center Grove down a couple of goals. No goals for CG here in the second half. Couple of goals for the Panthers in this third. Franklin tries a shot attempt. Picked up by Arthur. Knocked away. Pinnell picks it up. Well, Park Tudor's doing a good job on defense, but we're maintaining possession. That's what you got to do. Keep taking shots, and if you don't get the goal, we've got that defense or that that offensive player behind the goal that seems to be coming up with the loose balls and keeping the ball in our end of the field. And we talked about that at halftime. That's what we need. Maintain possession, get open shots, and hopefully get a couple in. Arthur roughed up. There's a flag from the outside official. Update on Center Grove Baseball again. They're playing at Bedford North Lawrence tonight. Top of the fifth inning, tied 4-4. Center Grove 10-0 on the season, ranked number one in 4A. All right, see if Arthur does what she did the first time. Shot as soon as they blew the whistle. Not easy to do, again, with the girls' sticks to shoot from that far out, but Kendall's really good at it. She's got a really good shot, and hopefully can get another one past the goalie here. Arthur scores their third goal of the night. Patrick for Kendall Arthur. Center goal within one, 6-5, and we have 2.06 to play in this uh, third quarter. Yeah, I like it when they do uh, make me look good when I make the call there. <laughs> it doesn't happen often, but Kendall, when she's got a shot like that, she's she's so tough to defend. Uh, good job by Kendall Arthur. Update on Center Grove Tennis, again, playing at Franklin. Franklin's had Center Grove's number the last couple of years. They've been really, really good, and Franklin uh, already has three points on the board. They won one, two, and three singles, and last report, uh, Center Grove was trailing at one and two doubles. So it's set back tonight for the Center Grove girls tennis team on the road at Franklin. And I'm sorry, Kevin, I missed that update on the baseball. What was the? It's a good game. It's 4-4, top of the fifth at Bedford North Lawrence. That's good. Center Grove's had a lot of success in baseball this year. Haven't had a lot of close games, so this is good for them to build, uh, build some character. The Trojans and Stars last year went extra innings. Center Grove did beat b last year here at home in baseball. Looks like they might be headed that way again this year maybe to extra innings. The draw is won by the Panthers. Whistle. Two minutes. Twenty-four knocked down. That's Izzy Wallace, and then we have a conversation with Kendall Arthur. That's not a yellow. No, it's not a yellow. Okay, just checking. Thank you. A lot of discussion about that. All right, here we go. Here we go. We're gonna handle you on it. Not a yellow card Izzy, against Center Grove. Izzy, yeah, sometimes our microphones are a little close to the sideline, so we get to hear uh, a lot of conversations. Coach did a good job there, asking the official for an explanation. He explained it, and we're back to play. 145 to play in the third. Is that Hadley? Yes, it is. Hadley, she likes to do that drop step, spin move. She's, Very creative. Yeah, she's done a couple of them there, but we did a good job adding that second defender to when she spins back into the middle. We're picking her up, doing a nice job on defense. Goalie makes a save, and out to Franklin. Good job by Fisher. In goal, here comes Franklin. She's a tremendous athlete, isn't she? Sure is. She gets down the field quick. She's got long legs. She's a fast runner. She does a good job maintaining possession under pressure. Scott, we've got raindrops. I thought I just saw something. Raindrops here at the CG Lacrosse Complex. Sure didn't expect that. With 40 seconds to play in the third. Might be one of those isolated little showers, if you will. McIntyre just trying to find an opening. Good defense. We're down to 30 seconds in the third. Back to Franklin. 
Yeah, McIntyre did a good job crossing the lane there. Looked like she was trying to take a left-handed shot. Good job by the defense. She didn't have it, but she pulled it out and set it up, and we're going to get 20 seconds to go, see if we can get one in the goal here in this last 20 seconds. That's Dina Spear, number eight. She's going to take a shot and scores. We're tied at 6-6. Her first goal tonight. Yeah, really nice job by Dina. Good job by all the all the Trojan girls. They did a great job being patient, looking for an open shot, found it, and uh, Dina Spear gets us even at the end of the third quarter. She scores with 12 seconds to play in the third. We're all knotted up at six apiece. It's going to make for a very exciting fourth quarter. Boy, look at the pressure they've got around Emily Franklin there on the circle. They do not want her to get the ball with this short time on the clock. Still loose, still loose. Three seconds, two, and that will bring us to the end of the third quarter. What a matchup. Number one versus number two in the state. We're tied at six apiece. We're headed to the fourth. This is CG Girls Across. Our car wash remembers your car's quirks better than your favorite barista remembers your coffee order. Delivering a wash experience as smooth and effortless as your morning latte. Cinegrove Lacrosse Complex. Number two, Cinegrove hosting the number one team in the state in Class 1A, Park Tudor. Game tied at six apiece. We have 12 minutes left to play in this final quarter to decide our winner tonight. It's been an impressive battle tonight by both teams, but how about the Trojans? A really nice rally. They went down a couple of goals and got two goals to get this game tied heading into the final quarter. Yeah, a couple minutes to go there, and it looked like Park Tudor might be on a little run uh, to take a you know three-goal three, three goal lead, and that'd be tough to come back from. But Center Grove tightened it down, did a great job on defense, forced some turnovers, got the ball on our end of the field, and took advantage of it. Great job by, by Dina Spear and Kendall Arthur. Dina scored her first goal of the game, Kendall with her third goal. So great job by the by the Lady Trojans, and we're going to go into this fourth quarter tied up 6-6. It's going to be an exciting finish. And we seem to broke the broke the uh, south side goal advantage on that That's one. Right. Both teams played even, so no advantage to Park Tudor here by going to the south goal, hopefully. And uh, All right, we're ready to get this fourth and final quarter underway. Ellie Hunter for Park Tudor and Lila Weir for Center Grove going to take the draw. Here we go. 14 gets control of it for the 
Panthers. That's Chloe Anderson. Lauren Richer, three goals on the night. Immediately double, triple team. Now works her way to the right side. Goes in behind the goal, 26. Lizzie Sturman. And now six, Hadley Murphy. Murphy had a great first half, couple of goals. Been quiet here in the second half. Yeah, Wallace has picked up some of the scoring. Or, I'm sorry, Richards picked up on the scoring for, uh, for Park Tudor. She tried on that possession. We did a great job on defense, picking her up with two or three girls, making her force it outside, forcing the turnover, and Emily Franklin makes a great spin move there. Franklin to the middle, Pinnell goes right, comes back left. Flag out against Park Tudor. Yeah, it looks like jo Jolie Pinnell is going to have uh, going to have that penalty opportunity here. Trying to give the Trojans the lead. Sergo's last lead was 4-3 back in the third or second quarter. It is a goal. Not sure what happened. Looks like only two people on the field realized that the play was live there. Jolie and one of the officials. Pinnell scores to make it 7-6 Trojans. Now there's a discussion, but the one official did indicate goal for Center Grove. But there is a discussion. And let's see what they're going to decide. Goal, Center Grove, Pinnell. That's her, what, third goal tonight? Second goal, second goal. Trojans back in front, 7-6. Their last lead was 4-3 back in the uh, second quarter. Not sure what happened. There must have been a uh, not a very loud whistle. Nobody seemed to react besides Pinnell. She took advantage of it. All right, we've got Ellie Hunter for Park Tudor and Lila Weir at the draw. 10.35 to play, final quarter. Center girl back in front by one. It'll be Trojan ball. Yeah, good job by Lila there. She didn't come up with the ball clean, but she had – a play on it and, and forced a uh, penalty by Park Tudor, so we're going to have possession. Get your four, get your four. All right, here we go, Weir. Nice move by Weir. She's got an open lane. McIntyre in behind the goal. Arthur. Scores. Nice job. Kendall Arthur got the ball behind the goal, made a move, came around the right side, and got a great shot on, on the goalie to take an 8-6 lead for Center Grove. Great start to the fourth quarter. Kendall Arthur, four goals tonight. She's got four of the team's eight. I think all of a sudden uh, – Maybe it's uh, trending her way tonight to be that Center Grove player of the game. Yeah, she can smell those hot baked uh, <laughs> <laughs> rolls that, that uh, Texas Roadhouse the is famous for. The legendary rolls at Texas Roadhouse. But uh, she's played well tonight. They've had a lot of uh, great performances tonight. Yeah, absolutely. She's done a great job on offense. And uh, Fisher, Alita Fisher, a goalie's done a great job on defense. So we're going to have a tough decision to make. So a timeout called. Coach Sherman right in front of us, huddling up with her team. Yeah, Coach Sherman's been around women's lacrosse in the state of Indiana for a long time, and she's done a great job building the sport all over the state, not just at Park Tudor, but all over the state. She's been responsible for a lot of the growth in lacrosse. She's a, She's been a, a huge part of women's lacrosse in Indiana for sure. 
9.51 on the clock, so still plenty of time in this one. Kind of wonder what's the conversation. We can hear a little bit of what Coach Sherman is saying here to our right just below us. But Coach Craig Jarrett in his first year as head coach of the Trojans, he's one doing a great job with this program and just wondering what the strategy might be now that you're up two goals. Obviously, you could be a little more uh, patient offensively, if you will, to work some clock. But I think you got to still stay on the attack, though. I, you know, this this Park Tudor team is just too good. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to want them to, to burn a little clock if they can. But uh... – but we've got a lot of girls who can score and score quick. So if they get an open shot, I'm sure they're going to take it. But, yeah, he's done a great job this year. He's got some real good assistant coaches. Uh, Abby Barthol's doing a good job for him. She was a former player at Center Grove. And uh, kind of neat, I got to see her dad over on the sidelines. Uh, her dad, Robin Barthol, was really influential in building Center Grove girls across. Uh, when I got involved in the program seven or eight years ago, he was one of the uh, board members and really grew the sport so it's neat to see his daughter now here coaching he's over there in the stands watching um it's it's really cool cool to see all right hunters hunters taking every face off for park tutor but we've been mixing it up and it seems lila weir here recently has been doing a really good job hunter versus weir in this face off again 951 left to play in the final quarter Centergrove trying to knock off the top team in 1A, Park Tudor. Centergrove, your number two team in the state rankings. Park Tudor gets the draw. Izzy Wallace, 24, finds 26. Lizzie Sturman. Five. Hanson. Furquan. Finds 26. Sturman. Good job by the defense. I'm not sure what they called there, but uh, something against the Trojans. Yeah, defense is doing a good job. They're, they're forcing them to keep it outside, not letting them get in close. And Park Tudor's got two girls that uh, do primarily most of their scoring, and um, I'm sure they're going to do everything they can to keep them from getting the ball in close. Lauren Richard, she's been really good tonight. She's got the ball, works her way behind the goal. Richard, three goals tonight for the Panthers. And they did call a penalty on center road there. So it's going to be 25, Lauren Richer. Let's see if she's going to take the shot or if she's going to drive in. Looks like she's preparing to take the shot from there. Three goals for Richer tonight. Going for number four. And she just got it. Four goals for Richer. And they're within one goal of center growth. Eight twelve on the clock. We're in the final quarter. There's always a little bit of a safety net there, if you will, when you're up two. But uh, when you're up just one, yeah, now it gets now it gets tight. It's a lot different. Still plenty of time. Eight twelve to play. Yeah, I'm sure we're going to see a lot of offense from both teams still there. Hunter and Weir get after it. On the face-off. Hunter scoops. Yeah, nice job by Hunter picking up the ground ball there. Hunter keeps on going. Hanson. Sturman. And behind the goal. Furquin. Wallace. Wallace trying to split the defenders. Draws a penalty. Boy, that's a tough one. Looked like pretty good defense. She drove. We collapsed on her. Had two defenders. Officials saw something and called the penalty. 
Chance to tie. 7-15 and counting, fourth quarter. Misses. Kind of bounce off the turf, up and over the net, over the goal. Yeah, the defense did a good job. They collapsed on her quick there and forced her to take a shot. I don't think she was quite ready for it. Shot it a little bit hard and down and bounced over the back of the goal. Murphy had it knocked away. Here comes Wallace. Wallace still controlling it. Lizzie Sturman. Scooped up by the goal and well done by Fisher. Real good job by Fisher. That ball looked like it bounced off of the... Uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, yeah, the ball bounced off of the, the Fisher stick and then off of the goal itself. I thought it looked like it was going to go in, but nice job by, by Alita to stop that. Fox drops it back. Robinson ahead to Green, Kelsey Green. Throws it back once again to Robinson. Now throws it to midfield to 44. This is Weir. Weir's a good athlete. She might try to go towards the goal. Puts on the brake. She stays out here high left side. Five and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Trojans by one. Pinnell with possession. Well, I'd really like to see him work the, work the ball around, get it behind the goal to Kendall Arthur. She's had a lot of success coming around from the backside. Arthur, four goals tonight to lead the way for the Trojans. That's Reese Burns, 24. Obviously, Center Grove taking its time, working some clock. Looking for that high percentage shot. There it is. Burns, I should say. Uh, Kendall yeah. Arthur behind the net. She's yeah, going to try a second time, and she's something against, I think, against oh, I think Grove. they called an offensive foul on her, yeah. It goes against the Trojans. Boy, that's a, that's a tough one. She was working to get inside. Get that shot she's made a couple of tonight, and they called an offensive foul on her. Four and a half minutes to play. In the fourth. Center Grove clinging to a one goal advantage, 8 7. Well, just like us looking for Arthur, I'm sure they're, they're going to be looking for Richer if they can here on offense. She's had a, the hot hand. She's been hot from the you know, second and third quarters. Murphy was hot in the first quarter for the Highlanders, or I should say the Park Tudor Panthers. Good job by Lila. Forces a turnover. Ball's bouncing around, and we come up with it. That's, Pinnell. Uh, Pinnell's got the ball, yeah. Back to Pinnell. Pinnell scored early for us, and I don't think she's got one since then, but she's a, she's a definitely got a good shot. She's not afraid to shoot it. Eckhart lost control. Recovered by 21 for Park Tudor Charlotte Sturman. Sturman goes to Murphy. Hadley Murphy. Works it left of the goal. And that goes in behind the net. 26, that's Lizzie Sturman. Murphy tried to take a shot, had it knocked away. Center Grove goalie Fisher trying to get the ball, and she does get control of it. Yeah, good job again by Alita Fisher. She stepped out and stopped that shot by Hadley. Two and a half minutes to play. I think Fisher heard us talking about Arthur there, possibly getting the uh, Outback Steakhouse player of the game. She's trying to make a case for it herself. Doing a great job at goal. Lily Harris. And we've got timeout, Park Tudor. 
Coach Leslie Sherman calls a timeout. 225, 224 on the clock again. 224, some more raindrops. Not a hard rain, just a, a little, a few, a few sprinkles, if you will. Wow, we're going to have a fantastic finish here tonight. 224 to play. Center Grove 8, Park Tudor 7. Scott, if the Trojans hang on, maybe the biggest win in program history for the girls? It's got to be up there towards the top. Yeah, at least as long as I can remember, this is a great one, especially with being a rematch from last year's state championship. You've got one versus two. It all lined up for tonight to be a great game, and so far it has been. Big thank you to the Center Grove Girls Lacrosse Program for having us out tonight to do the live stream. A big thank you to all those watching online. We've got a good audience here in attendance tonight and also a good audience online. So appreciate everybody tuning in to this very exciting game between Center Grove and Park Tudor. And they're leaving it all out on the field tonight, that is for sure. The effort's been great by both teams. Sure has. It's great to see the girls working so hard. And, again, you look over at the stands, and, and Park Tudor doesn't have a big crowd, but Center Grove's still got the bleachers pretty full. It's great to see. Jason Arthur's the uh, president of the of the Center Grove Girls Lacrosse Program, also coaches, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the 12U girls. So he's, he's really big on getting the younger girls involved, and it shows. The girls have been out here cheering them on all night and even got to play at halftime. So really exciting night for all the girls across program. Another update, Center Grove Baseball trying to get to 11-0. and They're now up 6-4 to at Bedford North Lawrence. That's in the bottom of the sixth inning. So it had been tied 4-4 in the fifth, and now it's 6-4 Trojans. Uh, leading BNL and baseball bottom of the six. So Center Grove trying to get to 11 and 0, and they'll be home tomorrow. Six o'clock first pitch against the Cathedral Fighting Irish. We'll be there with the live stream of tomorrow night's game between CG and Cathedral. Coach Jarrett, I love him. <laughs> he knows how to get him fired up. Yeah, he's got the girls fired up for sure. Get out there, play tough defense, and uh, see if we can close this one out. He's got that enthusiasm, that is for sure. Yeah, he's new to lacrosse, but he's learning the sport. He's learning the learning the game. He's got some good assistant coaches helping him, and uh, the girls seem to be responding well. And uh, see Coach Barked all over there on the sidelines. She's, she's dancing. She's excited. I think all the girls are excited to finish this one out. And now the... Panthers break huddle. Two twenty-four to play. Fourth quarter. Center Grove eight. Park Tudor seven. Looks like Park Tudor's going to have possession to start coming out of this timeout behind the goal. Some confusion on who's going to take the ball here. Looks like Lauren Richard's going to take pick it up and start out. She's dangerous. We've got to keep an eye on her. Mm-hmm. Lauren Richard attacks the goal. What do we have? Took a shot, came bounced off of the goal, but uh, they did call a penalty. Going against the Trojans. Looked like it went off the piping. So Richer, Richer will well, and they take pulled, the shot here. So, don't know the rule here, but the goalie's been pulled out, so she's got a – haven't seen this before. She's got an open shot with no goalie. And it's a miss, <laughs> but it's picked up by the by Park Tudor. Well, you don't see that very often. No Lauren Richards, a great, great, uh, great, great scorer, had an open goal, and Center Grove got lucky, and she put one off the rail there. So I'm just wondering if the infraction was against the goalie, and that's why. Yeah, it must have been. I, I didn't see. I couldn't tell from here what they called, but yeah, it must have been against the goalie. Another foul here against the Trojans. 129 on the clock, a chance for the Panthers to tie, and they do. 24, I believe, yes. Yeah, Izzy, Izzy Wallace. Wallace, her second goal. One twenty-five to play in the fourth. 
Well, we got lucky on the open goal there with no goalie, but uh, it's tough to tough to get lucky twice in a row. So she got a good shot there, tied it up, and minute 25 to go. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to go win this one. How critical is this draw going to be? It's going to be important for sure. With only a minute 25. Yep, and we've got Hunter for Park Tudor and Lila Weir for Center Grove. They've taken most of the draws this fourth quarter, and it's been pretty even. 14. Yes. For, for Chloe Anderson for Park Tudor. To Izzy Wallace. Wallace maintains possession. Franklin knocks it away. Wallace hit to the ground. Goes against Franklin. And now here goes Wallace. Another whistle. And now Wallace out on top. 101 against Fisher. Park Tudor can take the lead with one minute left. Good job, Trojan defense. Not sure who. One of them got their stick in there and deflected the shot. Good job collapsing on her. She drove to the middle. 45 seconds to play. Whistle blown on the far side of the field. Clock is ticking away. Still, now they're going to say stop the clock. 35 seconds to play. Looks like Center Grove is going to have possession. Fox throws it to the middle. Taylor Robinson. Trojans maintain possession. Clock continues to run. We're down to 20 seconds. Robinson on the far side of the field, down the sideline. We've got a little bit of time, but uh, but you gotta got to have some urgency here. Ball out of bounds, so it's going back to Park Tudor. Under 10 seconds. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. And that will bring us to the end of regulation tied at eight apiece. So we'll get set for OT. They're going to put five minutes on the clock for this overtime session. Again, we're tied at 8-8 eight, eight at the end of regulation. Well, we're trying to get some clarification here on what they're going to do for overtime. This is new for me, Kevin. I've not been to a, a, a girls lacrosse game where it's gone in overtime, so this is going to be exciting. So, yeah, try to listen in. They're going to have a conversation with the coaches right in front of us, the officials. I'm wondering if it's going to be sudden death. First goal wins? Yeah, I assume it's first goal wins, but I have – I was just talking with uh, Jason Arthur up here in the in the in the booth, and they they do occasionally do a, a where you've got the two girls doing face off and two goalies, and that's it. And uh, I don't think that's what they're doing, but uh, but it's going to be exciting to see. So again, coach is having a discussion here with the officials. So we were told, what, five minutes for they're, the overtime session, or are they going to do three minutes? No, I think they were giving them five-minute break before they start overtime, but they're going to go three minutes, and then if neither team scores, they'll do another three minutes. And hopefully by then, Center Grove's won this game. I don't know what they'll do after that. We'll have to wait and see. So what we'll do, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back with overtime. Tied at eight apiece between 1A number one Park Tudor and 1A number two Center Grove here at the CG Lacrosse Complex. This is CG Girls Lacrosse. Our 
car wash remembers your car's quirks better than your favorite barista remembers your coffee order. Delivering a wash experience as smooth and effortless as your morning latte. Still scoreless after the first overtime. They'll take another break, switch ins, and play another three minute overtime session. And if they're still scoreless after two overtimes, they'll play a third overtime. And then and if no one scores after what, three overtime sessions, the game will end in a tie. Yeah, I think that's right. Still uh, still has to be determined. When I, it wasn't real clear, but it sounds like that's what they're going to do. But boy, what a, what a night we've been treated to tonight. This has been great, girls lacrosse. Exactly what we expected. We've got one and two playing each other. This is the kind of game you hope for, and we've been lucky to have it. Trojans making a lot of noise in their huddle. They're ready to go for this overtime session. We're still about a one minute away before we get to this overtime. Park Tudor to our right, still huddling with their coach. Great, great uh, rally by the Panthers. They were down 8-6 in the fourth. Yeah, a lot, a lot like Center Grove at the end of the third quarter with uh, that two-goal rally to, to even things up. Park Tudor did the same thing at the end of the fourth. So. Let's see what we're going to – we know Park Tudor is going to send uh, Ellie Hunter out there to do the draw. Looks like uh, Center Grove's going to have Lila Weir. Yes, it'll be Weir for the Trojans against Hunter. These have been some pretty good battles tonight on the draw. Sure have. These are both uh, both great, uh, great at the draw. They're both really good at if they win, they, they typically get the ball themselves. So, like to see Lila pick this one up here and take off on offense. See if we can end this one quick. That would be ideal. Again, sudden death. Three minutes on the clock. Tied at eight apiece. Arthur going after it. She's got it. Arthur for the Trojans. Well, she's had the hot hand tonight, so I'd love to see her with the ball in her hand. She keeps it. Now finds Pinnell. Out on top, Franklin. Franklin advances, goes to the middle. Now goes left, looking to score. Holds on to it, being very patient. Yeah, does a good job there. She drove, and she was looking to shoot, but didn't have the shot, so she didn't force it. And she got it. Game over. Great job, Emily Franklin. She attacked, looked like she was going to take the shot, then pulled it out, spun around, took an open shot. Great job by the Center Grove Trojans. Trojans celebrating, knocking off the number one team in 1A, Park Tudor, 9-8 to eight in overtime. Emily Franklin scoring her second goal tonight. It's the game winner. What a ball game here at the CG Lacrosse Complex. Franklin, she wasn't going to be denied, was she? No, she sure wasn't. She's been quiet. She got the first goal of the game, and then uh, 
and then been quiet for the rest of the game, but she stepped up big when the girls needed her and when the team needed her and uh, got the win for them. Kind of a bookends game for her, if you will. First goal and last goal. Got the game winner. Wow, what a what a finish. Again, great patience by Franklin. She could have taken the shot early, but she held on to it. Didn't like her look. Didn't like the, the, the shot attempt and uh, yeah, came but, back and got it on that second look. Yeah, it looked like Park Tudor expected her to kind of step back and set things up, and she did, and she kind of did a little drop step, spun around there, and the shot was there. She took it and made him pay. She's really good at it. Good job by Emily. So the loss puts Park Tudor's record at seven and three, and Center Grove now at eight and three. And once again, the Trojans in one A, number two, knocking off the number one team in one A, Park Tudor. And again, they lost to Park Tudor in the last meeting in the, the state championship last year, sixteen uh, eight. I think they're closing the gap. What do you think? I sure think so. And, and I'm sure both these coaches are expecting to see each other again. They're they're dominating Class One A. And I'm sure both of them expect to see each other again in the state championship. And uh, when they play again, hopefully they do. It'll, I'm sure it's going to be another exciting game. As we go to break, we got to come up with our player of the game. We'll discuss during our uh, commercial break. Could be Franklin getting the game winner. Could it be Arthur, what, four or five goals tonight? Yeah, could be Alita Fisher at goal. She did a great job. We've got a lot of candidates for our player of the game. We'll have it coming up after the break. Big win tonight, 9-8 in OT. Center Grove over Park Tudor. This is Center Grove Trojan Girls Lacrosse. People spend all day washing and buffing their ride to shiny perfection by hand. But you, you've learned the fine art of delegation. In overtime, victorious over Park Tudor. 9-8 to eight in OT, knocking off the state defending champ Panthers and the number one team in 1A. Emily Franklin gets the game-winning goal in the overtime session. 
she wasn't going to be denied. And uh, the Trojans, a great team effort tonight, Scott. I tell you, it takes a total team effort, defense, goalie play. Center Grove uh, offense was really good. So trying to come up with our Center Grove player of the game tonight, not easy. But we decided we're going to go with Kendall Arthur. Four goals tonight. She kept the Trojans in this contest, gave them the lead, and she played well tonight. She did a great job, scored, scored goals when they needed them. She did a great job at the beginning of the game with the uh, control and the draw and um, really was a difference maker tonight. It was a tough decision. Emily Franklin had a great game, scored the game-winning goal, and, uh, and of course the goalie, Alita, Fish, Alita, did a great job at goal. She sure did. But, uh, yeah, Kendall, control, Kendall kept a minute and earned, earned that Texas Roadhouse dinner. <laughs> yeah, she gets a dinner for two. Compliments of George Hill and uh, the great uh, staff and team that he has over at Texas Roadhouse here in Greenwood. So we handed that off to to Kendall Arthur, and maybe she'll take one of her teammates uh, with her, possibly. But uh, just a, an enjoyable evening of girls lacrosse. Scott, appreciate you sitting in tonight at the last moment. Our good buddy Rick Embry uh, going down to Franklin tonight to support his daughter playing tennis for Center Grove against Franklin. So I appreciate you sitting in. We saw a good one tonight. Yeah, sure did. Thanks, Kevin. On that, we'll wrap it up. Your final score, once again, 9-8 Trojans. Get it done in overtime over the 1A number one team in the state, Park Tudor. With the win, Center Grove now 8-3 and three on the season. Park Tudor with the loss, 7-3. and three. Tonight's Center Grove girls lacrosse coverage was produced by Center Grove Sports Network. Our next web stream coming up tomorrow, Center Grove baseball, first pitch, 6 o'clock, Center Grove hosting Cathedral. Until then, this is Kevin Conrad for Scott Hendrick and our camera operator Sam Benegas saying goodnight, everyone, from the Cinegrome Lacrosse Complex. <laughs>